think we are set. Good to have you here with us, those of you who have joined us. And, <clears throat> excuse me, this will be, uh, this is being recorded and will be available on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our website um, later today or in the next couple of days. I'm not sure how soon Barb's going to be able to get it up to the website, but certainly it will be available. On uh, Facebook. So just a few more minutes, give people a chance to get here. Um, do want to remind you, um, if this is one of your first times with us, to to make sure you have a cookie or a cracker or something like that for communion, as well as something to drink, whether it's wine or juice or milk or coffee or whatever your chosen. Um, beverage is. <clears throat> Excuse me, because we will be having uh, a time for communion later in the service. Good morning, Karen and Anne. Good to see you. Good to see you. just 10 o'clock. I just saw the, the clock change on my computer, so. So a few announcements. Um, this is the live stream of Holy Covenant MCC's virtual worship for Sunday, January 24th, 2021. And again, that reminder to have a or cracker or something and something to drink with you so that um, you can celebrate communion with us. Upcoming dates, uh, Thrive with Pride group, the plenary session, the large uh, group meeting is on Tuesday, January 26th. That's this coming Tuesday at 11 a.m. Peggy Tully, who is a staff member with Age Options, will be joining us to talk about healthy living for 2021. Um, and that's all kinds of healthy living, not just uh, the ones we think of like diet and nutrition and exercise, but other kinds of, of healthy living as well. Um, if you can't make that time, the meeting will be recorded and available to, to watch later. Um, so you can either go to the Age Options website or check out the event page. The small group uh, Thrive with Pride meeting, the next one will be Thursday, uh, February 4th at 7 p.m. And that will be by Zoom. So if you would like to attend that, um, feel free to email me or contact me and, and let me know. Um, and I can get you that, that link. Oh, good morning, Barbara. Good to see you. Um, we did not get a whole lot of snow. The grass isn't even really covered. It it looks sort of like the frosting on on a um, um, oatmeal cookie or something. You know, the ground is poking among the grass. Although it, there's supposed to be more later on today, so we will see how that goes. <laughs> um, yeah, we are living in Chicago, right? So, uh, Pints of the Pastor, the next date is Monday, February 8th at 6 p.m. Um, join us by Zoom, and the link is in the newsletter. Um, that's always such a, an enjoyable time. Uh, no matter who comes, no matter how many or how few, it, that's always good. So, um, if you just want to hang out and have some, while you have dinner and, and uh, chat, um, we will be there. Um, coming up later, I don't have all the details just yet, but on Thursday, February 11th at 7 p.m., we'll be offering a presentation by Elizabeth Heber. Uh, she, uh, they are with the Proud to Thrive Project at the Center for Disability and Elder Law here in Chicago. Uh, they'll be discussing things like powers of attorney, wills, um, other legal documents. Uh, that LGBTQ people might need 
um, and you know why they might need special ones or we might need special ones. So at any rate, um, that will be the 11th, February 11th at 7 p.m. And as soon as I have a link for that, I will uh, get put, we'll, we'll have it in the newsletter, we'll have it uh, on Facebook and so on. We'll be creating an event for that. Uh, just as a reminder, SAGE does continue to meet on Fridays at 1 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, you can contact me for the link or Eric um, and uh, join us. It's, it's always fun to catch up and see what's, see what's happening. And we do occasionally have presenters as well. Um, we are just about done in the fellowship hall. Um, we're still uh, needing to, to do a couple of things, um, especially upstairs now to clean up. Um, that, that room has basically, the sanctuary has not really been used for uh, huh, almost a year now, which is quite hard to believe, but um, except for a very small portion of it. So we'll be cleaning up in there. Um, and um, if you have any time, if you have a couple of hours or, <clears throat> excuse me, or, um, or a day that you can share with us to help us take care of some of that, that would be very gratefully accepted. And I want to shout out Kathy and Bob who have volunteered to shovel our sidewalks during the expected snow tomorrow and into Tuesday. Thank you so much. That is so helpful. Uh, good morning, Jim and Joni and Eric. It is good to see you all today. Uh, let's see. Ministries are still continuing, of course. Uh, we, we accept donations or donate. It's, it's possible to um, uh, make donations via PayPal by uh, Square um, on our website. Uh, there's a, there's a, a button directly to PayPal. Uh, you can send a check, uh, and we thank very, we are very grateful, and we thank very heartily those who have been generous to us, and we appreciate that very much. Um, if you have any questions about anything that's going on, about the renovations, um, about donations, about uh, worship, anything at all, if you want some support, uh, I, you can contact one of the board members, Roxanne, uh, Victory, Barb Adams, Lazarus, or Joni Beard. Um, and I, of course, am always available by, or almost always available, I do take a day off every once in a while, uh, available by email, phone, Facebook Messenger, text. Uh, for any pastoral care needs you may have, um, please do reach out and let me know. Um, I, I want to know what's happening, and I don't have my usual means of finding that out when we you know, after worship or, or during the coffee hour um, when I can chat with folks. And I really do miss that. So please do let me know. Um, this morning, our opening prayers, our opening prayer rather, is by Reverend Terry Peterson. The communion liturgy is by Reverend Rex Hunt. And the closing prayer is by Reverend Todd. So let us go now to God to worship. Our hope is in you, O God, for power belongs to you. As we turn our attention to you this day, renew our trust. As we pour out our hearts, our longing and our tiredness, our losses and our desires, our desperate hopes and our cautious dreams. Remind us that you alone are our refuge and you will not be shaken. Where our confidence has been misplaced, our hopes pinned on one person or one event or one moment. Call us back to your truth. You are our and your steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the Wisdom of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. The word of God came a second time to Jonah. Get up, go to the great city of Nineveh, and preach to them as I told you to do. Then Jonah set out and went to Nineveh in obedience.
obedience to the word of God. Nineveh was a city large beyond compare. It took three days to cross it. Jonah moved on into the city, making a day's journey. He proclaimed only 40 days more and Nineveh is going to be destroyed. So the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and dressed in sackcloth from the greatest to the least. When the news reached the ruler of Nineveh, they rose from their judgment seat, took off their royal robes and dressed in sackcloth and sat down in ashes. A decree was then proclaimed throughout Nineveh by decree of the ruler and the ruler's ministers as follows. Citizens and beasts, herds and flocks are to taste nothing. You must not eat anything and you must not drink any water. You must all dress in sackcloth and call on God with all your might. You must all renounce your sinful ways and the evil things you did. Who knows? Maybe God will have a change of mind and relent. Perhaps God's burning wrath will be withdrawn so that we don't perish. God saw their efforts to renounce their evil behavior, and God relented by not inflicting on them disaster that threatened them. Second reading is from the wisdom of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. Paul said, I tell you, my siblings, the time is short. From now on, those with spouses should live as though they had none. Those who mourn should live as though they had nothing to mourn for. Those who rejoice should live as though they had nothing to laugh about. Buyers should conduct themselves as if they owned nothing, and those who have to deal with the world should live as if all their dealings meant nothing. For the world as we know it is passing away. And our third reading is from the Wisdom of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. After John the baptizer's arrest, Jesus appeared in Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The realm of God is at hand. Change your hearts and minds and believe this good news. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw the brothers Simon Peter and Andrew casting their nets into the sea since they fished by trade. Jesus said to them, follow me, make me fishers of humankind. They immediately left their nets and followed Jesus. Proceeding a little further along, Jesus saw the brothers James and John bar Zebedee. They too were in their boat, putting their nets in order. Immediately Jesus called them and they left Zebedee standing in the boat with the hired help. And they went off in the company of Jesus. These are God's words. May the Holy One add wisdom and understanding to the hearing. Our message this morning is titled, Starting Over. And I would ask you to pray with and for me, please. Gracious and loving God, give us hearts to hear your wisdom through our human words. Give us grace and courage to be your people in this world. In all your names, amen. Well, we really are in a season of new beginnings, aren't we? All kinds of things are coming up. Uh, we talked about it a little bit last week. New Year, new administration in Washington. Um, 
you know, new new uh, possibilities with the COVID vaccine coming in and so on. It's just it just so many new things. It does really feel like a new day in many ways. Um, and I think about the inauguration on Wednesday. It was definitely not a traditional inauguration ceremony. As many of you know, I lived in the area for many, many years. Um, and while I never was actually down there for an inauguration, um, my sister and her husband and, and kids came for one of them because they were active in um, the state Democratic uh, Party and, and so on. And so they had an invitation. Um, and so they, they went, so we were sort of peripheral. We went to a couple of the parties with them and so on. Um, so I've, I've observed a lot of um, inaugurations. And this was definitely not a traditional ceremony. Uh, COVID-19 side of that, right? Um, as well as the need for the heightened security. But it had a real sense of celebration about it. Again, muted because of the deaths of so many to COVID-19, the memorial the day before the inauguration. But it was nonetheless a celebration. Um, a celebration of the diversity of the U.S., a true new day. Yeah, we have a new president who is, for all his good qualities, still a straight white senior male. One of these days we'll get past that. Uh, but the choices they made for that ceremony reflect the reality, or much of the reality, of the United States that we live in. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, for example, a black South Asian woman, the first woman to hold that position. She was sworn in by Justice Sotomayor, the first Latina on the Supreme Court. Lady Gaga, who is an openly bisexual woman, sang the national anthem, and the youth po poet laureate, Amanda Gorman, read her marvelous, marvelous poem, uh, to name a few. That's just the beginnings, right? Ms. Gorman wrote her poem, I understand, in the evening of January 6th, the aftermath of the attempted insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. She took the confusion and pain and fear and anger of that day, and she transmuted it into resolve and courage and hope, a meditation on the resilience of people with faith. Faith not necessarily in a Christian God, because that is not the reality of the U.S. today, but faith in a power greater than ourselves. Faith in a grace and hope beyond our fears. We climb that hill and we find that hope together in all our diversity of race and gender and class and, and traditions and faith. And our readings today speak also of a new day of hope, of starting over or starting anew. Jonah's call for Nineveh to repent bears fruit. The people of Nineveh try again. Paul calls believers to prepare for a new world. There's something new coming, he tells them. And Jesus calls those first disciples to follow him and to join him in his work. A new day, a new hope, a new beginning. These are powerful words in any age of this or any world. It is no accident that they're themes of popular culture, like Lord of the Rings or Star Wars, A New Hope, right? And not nor is it a mistake that they're invoked for all kinds of government meetings. But notice that these new beginnings do not come about by themselves. Jonah went to Nineveh, but the Ninevites responded with repentance. Paul advises restraint until the new world arrives, and Simon Peter, Andrew, 
James and John respond to Jesus' invitation. It takes work on our part, this new world, this new beginning. We do not and we cannot sit passively and wait for the good things to be, just to be handed to us. Uh, repentance and reconciliation, knowing what to let go of, committing to engagement in the work, these are ours to do as we prepare for a new day. Listen now to Ms. Gorman's poem again, and I will not do it the justice that she did, but I will do my best. Hear her call for that hard work of responsibility for our, our actions, of calling others to accountability for their actions, of change when needed, of mutual support and encouragement. Her call is not only for the U.S. or for a specific set of circumstances. Her words are for systems, for the whole world, as we start over. The hill we climb. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast, we've learned isn't always peace, and the norms and notions of what just is isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow how we weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country in a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother, can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge a union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gazes not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promise to Glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare. It's because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. We've seen a force that would shatter our nation rather than share it, would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy, and this effort barely nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith we trust, for while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption we feared at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour. But within it, we found the power 
to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move on to what shall be, a country that is bruised but whole, benevolent but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burden. But one thing is certain, if we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with. Every breath from my bronze-pounded chest, we will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the gold-limbed hills of the west, we will rise from the windswept northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the lake-rimmed cities of the Midwest. We will rise from the sun-baked south. We will rebuild, reconcile, and recover. And every known nook of our nation and every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. In all God's names, amen. And now we come to the time of community prayers when we gather together and lift up the prayers of the people. If you have prayer requests you would like to include, you would like me to include, uh, please put those in the comments and I will include those in, these, um, in our prayers in the se section where we pray for individuals. Good morning, Rox. Good to see you. So let us go now to God in prayer. Creator of the universe, do you really want us to sing your praise? Sometimes we don't understand you. You know, don't you, that we try to do what Jesus said? especially in the prayer that his followers would be one. And anyway, what I really want to talk to you about is, why has Israel attacked the Gaza Strip again? Why has Indonesia seen so many natural disasters in one week, earthquake and flooding as well as the loss of an aircraft? And what about Syria? Rain floods, the many refugee camps, People just desperately search for food and there may be ISIS sleeper cells waiting to take advantage of those disasters. God, rend the heavens and answer. The Holy One has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does God require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your mind? Why? over youth unemployment and COVID-19 restrictions in Tunisia suddenly escalating? Why are there COVID-19 searches in the UK and Sri Lanka? And, and why, since the new year, daily COVID-19 deaths around the world, at least in the countries that announce them, has been running at 10,000 plus daily? 
And where is the international will to deal with the long-lasting situations in Yemen and Somalia? What about the spill of untreated sewage in Puget Sound? It's affecting the Squamish selfish shellfish. What about the wildfires in Chile, Nepal, and New Zealand? What about the ground blizzard in Japan and storms across the UK? in Northwest Europe. We inaugurated a new president in the U.S. this week, renew the vision of caring, equality for all, love for each other with malice to none and care for all. As the Joint Nations African Union peacekeeping mission has ended in Sudan, where is their hope? But there is good news, gracious God. And we thank you for that, for the rollout of vaccines, of rescues from avalanches and landslides, of trapped miners found in China, of food banks still having food to operate and people willing to do it, that Egypt and Qatar have agreed to resume diplomatic relations, and so much more that the media doesn't report. We will sing your praises forevermore. And even as we pray for the world, we pray for individuals. For Laura C., with various health issues, and for Karen as she prepares for surgery. And now we lift up the prayers of our hearts, speak them, and know that God hears. And so we gather up these prayers and we offer them to God as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And we add prayers for Annie and Charlie. Amen. And now as we gather around God's table, I invite you to get the uh, cookie or cracker or whatever, as well as whatever it is you have to drink as we prepare to celebrate God's table. God of the summer's day, praise and wonder be. God of the lingering sunset and early dawn, praise and wonder be. God of the hot north wind, shower, God of the shady tree, God of the ripening harvest and sparkling sea, praise and wonder be. We gather together conscious that raising our hearts and minds is a gift of the spirit of life at work in the depths of our being. For the presence of that spirit in us, we give thanks. Together, mindful of people throughout human history who allowed the spirit of life to work in them for the betterment of our world and humanity. For their lives and their inspiration, we give thanks. 
And so we offer our thanks and praise, inviting the spirit of life, love, and goodness to move freely in our words and actions. Holy, 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 celebrating God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus is the story we gather around and give thanks for. Human like us, he discerned where the spirit of life is found in the everyday, in human interaction, in caring, in sharing, in being neighbor. He urged people to work together to establish the reign of God by wholehearted generosity by eliminating boundaries between people, by trust in the goodness of people, and by working for peace and justice in all human endeavors. We remember his total commitment to living fully and loving totally, and his faith in a God to be trusted whatever twists life could take. We also remember the meal tradition of Jesus. How he gathered with his friends in a small upper room where they shared that meal of bread and wine. He took the bread and blessed it and, took it and passed it to his friends and said, Take and eat all of you. This is my body opened for you. And when the meal was over, he took the cup, he blessed it too and passed it to them saying, This is my love poured out for you and for all nations. Do this too in memory of me. So we take this bread and this wine, mindful of the spirit at work in our lives, in the ordinary, in the everyday, and in our desire to love as generously as Jesus loved. We break this bread giving our amen to God, living and loving in us. We fill this cup with the fruit of the vine, reminding us of promises to love, of love generously shared of Jesus who loved so totally, and our call to live as courageously as Jesus loved. Take now the bread of life and the cup of hope. We give thanks for the spirit of life visible in Jesus, visible in us, visible in people in all walks of life. We give thanks for faith that, that recognizes and means this presence and this bonding of all people. We pray that we will allow the life and teaching of Jesus to motivate all that we do so that what we profess to have seen in his life and heard in his teaching might be evident in our living and our loving. So a brief recap of the announcements for those of you who arrived late or uh, wanted uh, the details again. Uh, Thrive with Pride group for LGBTQ seniors, which uh, Holy Covenant uh, works with uh, age options to to provide the large group session will take place on tuesday january 26th at 11 a.m by zoom um, there are uh, the, the link is in our newsletter and on the 26th we'll be joined by peggy tully who is an age options staff member 
to discuss healthy living for 2021. Uh, if you can't make it at that time, it will be recorded and, and, and you can watch it later uh, on the Age Options website. Our small group meeting for, age, um, for uh, Thrive, bleh, I'm sorry, for Thrive with Pride will take place on Thursday, the 4th of February at 7 p.m. and that'll be via Zoom also. And that link is also in the newsletter. Uh, the next date for Pints with the Pastor is Monday, February 8th um, at 6 p.m. by Zoom. Grab your dinner and join us for a social time, discussion, catching up, uh, just to, to make connections. Uh, coming up on Thursday, February 11th at 7 p.m., we will be offering a presentation on legal documents for LGBTQ seniors. Um, I don't have all the details yet. Um, that means I don't have the Zoom link yet, um, but it will it will be available as soon as I, I have that. Um, just as a reminder, SAGE does continue to meet via Zoom on Fridays at 1 p.m. Um, and if you'd like that link, contact me. And we would uh, appreciate if you have a couple of hours or even a half day or a full day uh, to help out with the final details of the cleanup and, and renovation, that would be extremely helpful. So don't hesitate to contact me or to Mary or Mary Ann to, to uh, see what needs to be done and, and coordinate that. And finally, don't forget to make your donations via PayPal, Square, electronic check, paper check, or text. Uh, we're thankful for all of your gifts. And I uh, do also want to thank um, Kathy and Bob for volunteering to uh, shovel our sidewalks for us with the snow that's coming in. All right, yeah, Eric. Um, the, the, yeah, I know that we prayed for them last week, probably ongoing prayers. And hello, Colin. I miss seeing you. So let us go now to our closing prayer. Now take the word of God into the world and place hope in the arms of others. Now take the word of Jesus into the world and follow to serve beside him in all the now take the word of the Spirit into the world and bring others near to the realm where all are welcome. In all God's names, amen. It is indeed good to see you. Let me see if we can chat for just a couple of minutes here via, via the, the comment box. Yes, yearly statements went out yesterday. I, I meant to uh, make an announcement about that as well. If you've donated to Holy Covenant um, in the last year, those statements did go out yesterday. So um, you should be receiving them um, in your email. Um, I know I got mine yesterday, so. Just checking to see if there's anything I missed. Nope, I don't think so. It is, as always, good to see everyone. Um, I miss seeing you all. As I mentioned earlier, I miss the uh, coffee hour catch-up and, and um, check-in. We will, we will now with the vaccine, we know that we will at some point be able to get back together again, hopefully sooner rather than later. So... For this coming week, my friends, be safe, be well, keep that social distance and wear your mask and wash your hands. Take care, blessings to you all.